everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you are new, welcome. My name is Meg, and today we are doing an episode of Bachelorette Talks with the season premiere with Becca. I feel like this season is well anticipated because we all got to see Becca get her heart broken in the last season with Ari. And if you were with me for Bachelor Talks during his season, you know I wasn't the biggest fan of him at all. So I have really high hopes for this season of The Bachelorette. So before we get started, if you are not subscribed to my channel and you don't want to miss out on future Bachelorette talks, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are new to my channel in general, welcome. I put out beauty related videos. So be sure to subscribe if that is something that you are interested in as well. So we had the start of season 14 with Becca and I have my notes on my phone. So I'm going to be referencing to that during this video. Um, it started off with the rem painful <laughs> reminder of what she went through last season with Ari. One of the funnier moments of the night was her meeting with Caitlin and Jojo and Rachel for that great relationship advice that Ari didn't listen to any of when he had to sit down on his season just saying but it was really funny that Rachel wanted to sage the mansion and I really enjoyed that part of it. And it was just hilarious how um, Caitlin said she had no idea what was going on and why they lit up a big doobie. <laughs> the main takeaway from that is that all three girls told Becca, I mean like no pressure at all whatsoever, but they all said that they gave their first impression rose to and first kiss their fiancés on all of their seasons. So far, the last three seasons of The Bachelorette with those three ladies have been successful so far in the relationship. All three ladies are still engaged to the person that they ended the show with. So let's see if we can keep it rolling with Becca. And I will have some spoilers at the end of the video, so I will be sure to let you know when to click off if you do not want to know what those are. One of the first guys that I want to talk about is David. He is the one that wore the chicken suit and he left a lasting impression and I thought it was interesting how towards the end of the night, the rose ceremony, a lot of the guys were hating on him saying like, if a chicken suit beat me to a rose, I'm gonna be super pissed, I'm gonna be super disappointed, da 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 da. They were hating on him for not being dressed in a suit but what he did was smart because he stood out and it also showed that he had a good sense of humor and I don't know about Becca, but that is something that I look for and that is important. For me, I need to be with someone with a good sense of humor and I found that person. So I didn't think it was bad that he came in the chicken suit. However, I would love to hear your opinion. What did you think of the chicken suit? Let me know down below. Now I'm gonna talk about the two football players, Clay and Colton. I felt like they were really like building them up to be good people. And I don't know why, but I feel like more so with Clay Play, like they were really like building him up to be such a nice guy and I'm kind of weary of that because that's totally what they did in the first episode last season with Ari with Crystal. They totally built her up to be like this super great person and she ended up being the villain of the show. So I'm interested to see where they're going to go with that but I really do like Colton a lot. Um, you can kind of see in the previews that he seems to make it pretty far in the show, but so far I think that he could be a really good match. But again, they were also kind of playing him up to be like a really great guy. I think that it's great that both of them have their own foundations that they are running and working on, and that is just amazing. Now let's talk about Jordan, Mr. Greasy, or uh, what was he calling it, Shark Fin Gray, or whatever. He was all about the fashion. I think it's really cool to like have guys express their interest in fashion. A lot of the guys on the show were really into what they were wearing, um, but he was definitely stand out. It seems like he's going to be one of the characters on the show that production is just going to love. Um, a lot of people are saying that he is going to be painted as a villain this season. That is what it seems like. It could go that direction, but remember last time they threw us through a loop with Crystal, so we will have to see the next episode to kind of see where he lies. Um, but yeah, his whole pensive gentleman thing was really interesting and how he wanted Becca to hear the tapping of his shoes to mimic a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> for him, it's kind of like, 
you don't know to take that genuinely or if like he's just he knows he's playing a character in his head i'm gonna be asking you guys a lot of like your opinions on the guys that we're discussing so let me know what you think of jordan do you think he's a phony or do you think he's a genuine person another person that stood out to me is lincoln and I think that he is presenting himself to be like a really nice gentleman on the show. And I think he could be a really good match for Becca. However, in the previews for this season, it seems like he's like at the pinnacle of a lot of drama. It looked like a lot of the fights and a lot of like the attitude and arguing. They were, he was always in the shot of it. So I'm really interested. I'm going to be disappointed if they try to make him the villain or if he is the villain for this season because he seemed like he gave such a great first impression on this night. I also really like Joe, the grocery store owner, but he did not move on. So I'm not going to waste any more time talking about him, but he did seem like a nice guy. Other two guys that stood out for me that I think that could make it further along in the show or that could be uh, good matches for Rebecca based on this first episode. I really like Jean Blanc, the Frenchman, um, and also Mike, the dude with the ponytail. He seems really nice as well. Now we can kind of move along to some of the drama on the show. We had that Jake the weirdo from home. Um, I definitely agree with Becca's decision to just immediately send him home. It is a little bit suspect that he had met her on several occasions, had no interest in her, found out she was going to be the bachelorette. It sounds like they had an interaction when she was home after Ari season and nothing happened. And then now he's on the show for her. So good for her for trusting her gut and her instinct and thinking that he may not be there for the right reasons. I thought the way that he handled himself was rather interesting. I feel like if cameras weren't around, it would have gone a lot worse. Um, he definitely came across, I got the impression of him that he doesn't accept rejection that well. He was just making excuses about how he's a different person now. And you can kind of see a few times I felt like he was like slipping up a little bit and that he was about to get like really pissed or maybe say something not so nice. And then you could see his eye kind of dart and he would remember that there were cameras and he was going to be on TV. So you could just tell that there's a lot of pent up tension and possibly aggression in him. Um, and he tried to hold it in and keep his cool before he left. But you could tell he was definitely pissed off about that so i'm glad he is gone now we're going to move on to the chase gate which is the drama between was it chris and chase so basically chase is ex-girlfriend ex-girlfriend supposedly saw him on after the final rose texted chris r who they lived in the same town i get how small towns work said that he is not there for good intentions da 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 da, da and he's just there to kind of revive his marketing career which let's be honest i would say at least half the people that are cast on that show are there for personal gain i mean unfortunately i got an impression about a lot of guys about how they were holding themselves how they were acting just their mannerisms and their non-verbal cues it seemed like they were a lot of them were really into themselves a lot of them thought that they were better than everybody else there and i just got like that general attitude of just like i'm here for myself even though they're competing for a girl, um, it seems like they were more, like they just seem to care more about themselves than what they're actually there for, if that makes sense. Let me know if you've got that impression too. Um, but basically, she was saying that he was just there to self-promote, had no real interest in actually getting engaged, da 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 so basically, I love how there's always drama on the first night. Basically, Chris goes to Chase to let him know like, hey, your ex-girlfriend texted me this and this and I'm going to talk to Becca about it. Well, here is where it gets confusing. His first reaction is that he never dated that girl. And then it switched to they dated, they didn't date, 
they were talking, they were not together, they were together, like he kind of couldn't really keep his story straight with this girl and like what their relationship was and said it was from years ago and it was so weird and creepy that she was still hung up on him and he wouldn't even consider her an ex-girlfriend and basically I think he just let his nerves get the best of him knowing that Chris was going to talk to Becca about it. So in full panic mode, Chase basically ran to Becca to say, hey, Chris said something about my ex sending him uh, a text and it was bad. And he couldn't even explain himself to Becca, even though Chris told Chase what the text entailed and gave him all the details, he couldn't reiterate that to Becca because he didn't want to get caught in a lie. So to play it safe, he just said, I don't know, it was bad, but it was a lie. Um, um, let me go get Chris. And it was just a very <laughs> awkward two on one as Becca called it. I just thought the whole situation was hilarious because then Chris is saying that Chase brought him into drama and that Chase may be the reason he goes home, but dude, you were the one with the text message, you were the one that says something to Chase, and then you were the one that wanted to talk to Becca about it. So you were kind of the drama starter here, not so much Chase, he just had the baggage. Now we are going to talk about Garrett, who has some drama. So basically Garrett seems to be like Becca's like ultimate dream man because he's all outdoorsy. They seem to have a lot in common, a similar upbringing. He reminds her of fishing with her dad who passed away. So he got the first impression rose, which could mean that he could be potential engagement material. However, the internet has done some digging on him and found some dirt. I mean, honestly, you would think that they would like do a decent amount of a background check before they let these guys get on air, but maybe they purposely want the controversy so people are talking about the show. That's probably it. I'm pulling up an article from Huffington Post which states the title is that Bachelorette's Garrett liked post mocking immigrants and Parkland students. His Instagram account has since been deleted, which is kind of suspect. Um, he appears to have a history of liking social media posts that mock trans people, undocumented immigrants, left wing women, and one Parkland High School student. Parkland High School was a high school that was victim of a mass shooting recently. According to the article, Garrett first made his Instagram private on May 24th, which was a few days before the season premiered, and appeared to have liked numerous posts from white right-winged pages, including that of conservative personality Tommy Lauren and a clothing company called America Supply Company. These likes were first captured via screenshots and posted on an Anon Instagram account Wednesday afternoon. Um, the article then goes on to state that Becca has openly supported Hillary Clinton and left-wing causes like Women's March, but coupling ideologically opposed of people is neither concerning nor surprising. However, many of the posts that Garrett's like captured in the screenshots by Huffington Post and internet users went far beyond simply endorsing conservative ideology. On America Supply Company, he consistently liked memes that mocked feminists and transgender people and made light of violence against undocumented immigrants. One image his account liked appears to ridicule leftist women for being fat, another jokes about US military addressing undocumented immigration by throwing small children over the border wall. The article continues to list more disappointing activity of his online habits. Um, but the real kicker here is that Garrett has since created a new Instagram account and claimed that his old account was hacked and that he wasn't doing any of that. So what do you believe? Let me know in the comments down below. But regardless, he got the first impression rose that night. Becca went on to say in the episode, since he pulled up in the minivan, she was smitten with him. And then Garrett went on to say on screen that he felt like the luckiest guy in the world, which seemed like a recipe for a fairy tale. But if these allegations against Garrett are true, obviously that is not, um, okay and it doesn't seem like somebody that Becca would want to be with so hopefully this mess gets sorted out and she doesn't end up with somebody that acts like that. The gentleman to move on and get roses aside from Garrett who has the first impression rose, Lincoln, Blake, Ricky, Jean Blanc, Christian, Clay, Willis, Connor, Jason, John, Ryan, 
Alex, Nick, Trent, Colton, David, Jordan, Leo, Mike, and then Chris R. So what, that's 21 people that moved on, so nine people went home. This is a lot of people. Of course, it will take a couple more episodes until we get truly familiar with the gentlemen that are in this running. So what did you guys think of this season premiere? And spoiler alert, this is the time to click off if you don't want the spoiler, but it's already been put out there by Becca herself. She leaked that she did get engaged on this season. Um, so, you know, that gives us something to kind of go through and see who we think is going to make it to the end. Do you have any early predictions on who you think like the top five guys are going to be? Let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Bachelorette Talks. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming episodes. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.